This is gonna be a long one. And hello, Sonic Crafters, and welcome back to a new series. And today we're reviewing Shadow the Hedgehog. We know, we read the title. It hasn't even been five seconds, and you're already fucking interrupting me. I'm here to cut the crap. So Sonic's had quite the trouble transitioned into 3D. Stop! So Shadow is standing on Green Hill, having non flashbacks when suddenly a portal to hell opens up and spews African American creatures into a generic city. As Shadow decides he's had enough of this shit, an edgy starfish tells him he can cure his amnesia. Not knowing what a telemarketing scam is, Shadow runs into worst stage in existence. After retrieving two damn chaos animals, the damn head of the damn- You get it, the game says damn a lot. If you're going to make jokes, make them funny. So the military leader who had his entire family killed by the same military commands his soldiers to kill the person who saved the planet because he blames him for having an entire militia committing an atrocity that he somehow survived. And I thought commanders were meant to be smart. I mean, if superheroes did your job for you, then you wouldn't need quality control anymore. That's actually a good point. Damn you, Sonic, for making the military obsolete! Also, if you're wondering why the green screen changed, this is why. Anyway. <laughs> The rest of the story is basically piecing together Shadow's backstory through unrelated cutscenes such as the gun commander somehow making it to the Ark while he's meant to be leading a resistance on Earth telling Shadow he was made from Black Doom's blood which is later used for a secondary paralysis in the final story debunking the Android theory which shouldn't even exist because it's debunked in the fucking game because it's a plot twist from a bait and switch FROM THE NEUTRAL STORY! I genuinely don't get why game theorists don't pay attention to the actual lore they're trying to piece together. Because that would take effort, my friend. We're not friends. I know, that was sarcasm, mate. Not your mate either. No, that's my dialect, you trat. There we go. <sighs> I fucking hate you. I know. Then at the end of the game, Black Doom teleports the comet into Earth's atmosphere so it can sprout tentacles and hentai the planet, freezing the inhabitants in fear, except from Shadow because he's too edgy to be scared of anything. So he runs off to Black Doom, leaving a bunch of furries to get bored. That explains why there's so much kinky fan art. I wish it started that late. So finally, Doom Guy debunks the Android theory and through Shadow's character development of unshackling himself from his past, he breaks out of the control of his parental figure. Wait, the edgy meme game has meaningful symbolism? And then he goes Super Saiyan to kill that parental figure in cold blood. Never mind. The furry somehow made it out of the comet alive despite being paralysed and literally eaten alive. Probably from Shadow excluding them from the chaos control. As the Chaotix fire, Dr Eggman super laser piss into it! Oh, fantastic reference humour right there. You know, only Sonic Tuber fans are going to get it, right? And who are the only people who are going to watch a Sonic review from a channel called Sonic Meerkat? Point. But yeah, in summary, the story is a mess due to its structure having few connections between the stories and of course, the mid-2000s voice acting making Sonic a hyperactive child and Shadow and Nemo. And while some extra insight into the character is nice, overall it's massively unnecessary, particularly nowadays with the direction of the character. But I'll save that for another time, because I want more content. And this one is long enough already. You know how in most Sonic games the first level is usually the best stage in the entire game? Well this is one of the worst stages in this game. Not THE worst, and surprisingly not the one you're all thinking of. Get on with it. 
So West Stockley starts off with a unique drop section where unlike all the others you can't hold down the A button to descend faster and having different physics to the parachutes in later levels killing the point of the tutorial. Then we get introduced to Sonic who calls Black's creatures and wants to destroy them. He's talking about the greys. Are you colourblind? They're clearly brown. Uh, seriously though. The missions in this level are kill all the things. The only mission type to not tell you when you miss an objective which is baffling because there's so many targets it's easy to miss them. But to the game's credits all of the enemies are laid out in a linear path making them easy to find. For most part. This particular part was written before I looked back at the footage and you know looking at the footage. I will admit some of them are me being a retard but you know. General playthroughs you're going to act like a retard too and this was one of the levels which gave me a little bit of trouble. Also if you find it unprofessional that I'm using the phone just remember this is the first proper fucking review and I'm literally doing a game which people normally take like 20-30 minutes to review in a super fast voice. I think I think that deserves a little bit of a break, so a little bit of green screen for out of context shit, I don't know. <laughs> wow, it's like linear game design can actually be beneficial in some cases. Other than that, the level teaches you some basic mechanics like roll running, weapon switching, firing, a skippable switch tutorial and a shitty ring dash tutorial. The only core mechanic that gets taught properly is the warping checkpoints which you'll inevitably see as you miss one alien hiding behind some rubble halfway up the level. You're certainly making a good case for why this game ain't shit. It's the first fucking level, there's plenty to go. But yeah, this is a terrible level. The only benefit is it makes Michael Bay cream himself with how much shit is going on. So the first timed objective in the game, it's pretty fun running through a gauntlet of enemies acquiring a retarded amount of ammunition to unload on a retreating foe. It combines a third person shooting and adventure style platforming elements together fantastically with alternating paths dependent on your skill of avoiding obstructions rewarding you with additional opportunities to lay siege on these mini bosses. For stage specific play, Sonic's dialogue actually plays into the story of how Gun suddenly turns on Shadow with him sounding genuinely confused. The music is banging as always. Well, yeah, it's a Sonic game. Sonic Chronicles? That's one game. It's only fair to praise the aspects that normally get overlooked. So many people making out that the Sonic series is objectively bad because most of the games don't compare to the truly great ones. Saying that the series as a whole is terrible, but when in reality most of the games are mediocre at worst. Sheesh, no need to get fucking preachy about it. Finally, the stage aesthetics are just fantastic. It does still have the city destruction vibe but the colour palette has changed considerably adding in some much needed variety. Black Bull's easy. But to give a bit more detail it works more like a traditional Sonic boss fight. You use a homing attack chain to damage the poor disproportionately sized wing creature's eye until you charge up Chaos Control where you can rapid fire a hidden gun while freezing the boss in place. Speaking of Chaos abilities. When you finally satisfy Shadow's bloodlust, he will go Super Saiyan God and will gain infinite ammo. Or you can waste rapid continuous damage for either Chaos Control or Chaos Blast. Chaos Blast being the most useful since you can still deal damage without a weapon. And Chaos Control changing functionality during boss fights where it freezes everything in place allowing you to prevent openings from vanishing. And during levels it warps you past the mission objective making it so you have to backtrack. I wonder which one's better. Ah, bias phrasing. Nice observational humour, fellow human. You know, you're the one who wrote this shit, right? So the secondary tutorial stage is much better than the first. 
smaller size, less obstructed arena areas, making committing genocide way easier. A evil mission where you get told if you run past the mission objective, and of course, a proper dash ring tutorial. Also wow, the second stage you'll ever play in the game, and it's fucking bright as fuck. It's a nice guy ruins aesthetic mixed with a sandstorm, overall a much needed change after the hellhole that was Restopolis. Right, so Shadow being stupid enough to follow Doom's extra attached strings, not at all disclosed in their deal, you get warped into a colourful cyberspace. A bit dull colourised, but if it was neon you'd get fucking blinded, so the milder colours are welcome. More importantly, this is the first mission to introduce platforming gimmicks in the form of searchlights. A side stage specific gimmicks that are bars that you can grab onto and move extremely slowly on. Finally, this is the first mission where there is an alternate endpoint past the Emerald, which swaps out the boring dome missions with more core platforming. Sadly, none of these missions appear on the bad stages where secondary objectives are a pain, but on the bright side that means that these missions always have a good level design to back them up. So here's a level that starts off with the infamous cutscene that shows just how edgy the game is. Inside of a bright carnival full of minigames. To be fair, the colours are still quite dull. Again, if they were a vibrant level, it'd just get hard to look at. Still though, doesn't help the dark, dingy, edgy aesthetic. Anyway, these missions include collecting a fuck ton of rings. Thankfully, the game functions like Sonic Forces Easy Mode as opposed to Hard Mode. Oh, that's what it does! Yeah, so the mission is actually quite forgiving, assuming you don't run into every group of enemies out there. The other mission is just more murder. For some reason, Gunn decided that while there's a fucking alien invasion that it'd be a good chance to raid Eggman's bases. What a bunch of fucking cunts! Other than that, there's a parachute gimmick which acts like the beginning of the game except you can jump down and the movement is less momentum based. And finally, there's a zip line which lets you move side to side to collect shit. So we enter the third tutorial stage, this time teaching us about vehicles. Here we learn that we can use them to ride on poisonous ground which is helpful when travelling through a nuclear waste dump giving us some much needed greenery to this burning planet, admittedly more irradiated than wanted. Other than that, there's some manual jump pads, some rail grinding, and missions split between collecting and committing genocide with two annoying partners. What's wrong with the precious b-boy? It's not so much what's wrong with him, it's more so just being without the dynamic of the chaotix, he goes from being a comedic foil to just being an annoying trat. So, if I got my own video essentially. Yeah, basically. Yeah, I totally forgot to record that line. Professionalism. But yeah, middle of the road mission, not that interesting, but isn't going to have you pulling your hair out. Now this is by far the edgiest stage in the game. Look at the dark dingy castle with the orange light polluted bloody night sky. The literal dead coming after you and terrifying faces carved everywhere. You mean the Halloween themed level? Wow, well, really? Is it like leaving out context within reviews can paint a different picture from what is really there? The game's still edgy as shit. Obviously. But to say that it isn't self-aware is fucking retarded. It's from a series built from a 90s cool kid stereotype. Of course it's built on marketing. The problem here is it's too cartoony for shooter fans. And it's too shootery for furry fuckers. Can you just get off your salt box and fucking review the game itself now. So yeah, the level has really nice Halloween aesthetic and shifts the balance of edgy level aesthetics away from cringy levels. As for the level itself, the stage actually splits off a little and even requires some camera control to see where to go. Yes, there's camera control, 
in a Sonic game. And honestly, only requiring to use the manual camera three stages in is a testament to the camera design in this game. Now that can be equated to being a mid-2000s and very linear game, but again, credit where credit's due. But also, criticism where required. You can only rotate and zoom, you can't look up or down, as well as it catching on level GMD, which sucks on the shit levels and adds to their frustration. So yeah, the missions are locating objectives. First, the Chaos Emerald, which is piss easy as always, to such a point I've been neglecting to mention them here, and will continue to do so. Amy's mission where she condemns you for attacking pawns despite doing that herself in the last game, and where she wants you to find Cream, who then takes the piss and asks you to find her pet she's had for longer than we've known her. So we find him, not in the congregation of other chow, but instead in a FUCKING WALL! Wait, physically inside? YES! Anyway, finally Eggman just wants us to light his lanterns. Finally, someone we can get into the howling spirit. And yell at us when we attack required obstacles to progress. Now his lanterns are off the beaten path, unlike Cream, so you end up flying on a different bird which I neglected to explain. They suck. Inverted moment based flying. Blech. If it wasn't for them having decent health bars, they'd be infuriating. But as it is, they're just boring and annoying. So Eggbreaker is more of an involved boss. He'll actually keep moving towards you to attack, making it so you have to continuously move away from him to be able to not die. Other than that, he just slides, jumps and AOE attacks. The respawning robots in the arena drop laser pistols, which make counter-attacking go from unfeasible from homing attacking and bouncing off him so you're stuck in the air, to just jumping, shooting and running the fuck away. Thankfully, the boss has a low amount of health, meaning he'll die before things get monotonous just repeating that easy strategy. So this stage's missions are a mix of genocide and reaching the going, so not much to talk about there. The level aesthetics, however, are more in line with what you'd expect from Game This Edgy, with a feisted ruin being infested by alien goo creating structures to grind and spin dash through, as well as a lot of background details with few barred walls being dotted about in your path as some kind of scrap together defence. Other than that, there's a lot more springs and climbing poles around more so than other levels before this point. It's definitely trying to make up for lack of platforming with cinematics, which, again, it nails the aesthetic of an alien invasion. Why the military is focusing on protecting abandoned rooms in the forest? Who knows, maybe they think they could make a nest there or some shit. But from the soldiers literally being everywhere, maybe they just advance super quickly because the aliens are so weak they literally explode upon fucking death. No wonder why Eggman's bases are the only ones which aren't penetrated by goddamn fucking aliens. Can we stop theorising and get on with the fucking analysis? Right. As for the boss fight, it's Blood Bowl in the middle of an arena surrounded by Rao you spring up to to be able to shoot at him from, or you can spawn kill the small fry and use their infinite ammo to reach Blood Bowl from below, absolutely cheesing the boss fight. Definitely a terribly designed boss if you don't have to engage with its mechanics. So the aesthetic clone of Digital Circuit, its main hub is a fucking pain to traverse through with no direct path from each hub. While the hubs themselves take full advantage of the admittedly limited colour panel concept from tutorialising them at the beginning to making you fire at them while on a thin moving platform so you don't get pushed off into a death pit. The hero mission takes full advantage of the level design making a pretty fun mission the neutral mission makes you skip the interesting segments to run to the end through clusterfuck hub and the dark mission. Fuck the dark mission. You have to find every single fucking pathway in the clusterfuck hub with limited view of your surroundings due to the angle making it easy to see what's ahead hub wise but hard to see the maze like pathways you're forced up and down. Which leads you to discover strange things like a random fucking chaos control out in nowhere. 
most likely to help anyone who gets lost in this fucking mess of a hub. But like, there's only one of them? It's in the very beginning area, so it's off the beaten path. It doesn't even help speedrunners. This was the first mission to result in the infamous over half hour completion the game is known for. As for the connected boss fight, it's a repeat of the Halloween Spooky Castle, except there's electric balls fired in all directions, you need to weave in between, and you actually have to aim. Thankfully, the bazookas deal more damage. Bad news, they have area damage, so the enemies in the arena you can't see get pot shots on you. Thank fuck for the ring health system, because otherwise that would have ruined the fight since they respawn, which would be a shame because the fight is actually really fun. So this is an aesthetic clone of the second tutorial stage, which has a tall jumpy robot, but other than that it's just a generic mission objective thing. I don't have much to talk about it because I'm so fucking retarded. I wrote the Charmy stage over again. I'm a fucking genius. You guys thought that Lost Impact was the worst stage in this game? <laughs> this fucking tumour of a level as I rip it into itty bitty cancerous pieces. Sure. So imagine if Lost Impact had three missions instead of two, had a stupid amount of enemies with lack of rings to recover your health, destructible walls with mission objectives hidden behind them, Maze like interconnected design and the only mission in the game where you have to carry objectives over to other objectives which makes you realise how shit the throwing arc is making you have to carry things over and over because you miss what you were fucking throwing at when it was right in fucking front of you So yeah, the genocide mission with hidden enemies inside walls Medic mission with patients hidden behind walls and a run to the gold ring where enemies burst out of walls to piss you off. Fuck this mission. The only good thing to come out of the flashback stages. It's a very easy boss that hovers around the arena firing highly infrequent and inaccurate missiles while dropping mid-air home attackable bombs and fires the occasional shockwave to stop you from attack spamming. The boss starts off being super vulnerable everywhere until their turrets break off one by one dropping those lock-on missile launchers for you to use. It's by no means a difficult boss, but a fun one. Quick to speed run, but not exploitable. <laughs> cool, another terrible stage. So this is the only mission without a going. Instead you go fuck with bombs. Detonating them is easy enough. Finding them, however, is another story. And on top of that, you're on a timer because, well, they're fucking bombs. The dark mission is detonating massive bombs which are dotted about in alternating paths in this non-linear level. What a surprise that finding quest objectives is harder when you increase the chance of going the wrong way. Other than that, the dark mission is alright to say the least. The hero mission however, you have to defuse many tiny bombs by sucking them up. And while the suction weapon can blow back enemies, it sucks. And well, it has a decently large range, so if you say accidentally suck an enemy, then release the suck expecting you got the bomb, yeah you fucking detonated it. But wait, it gets better. There's a destructible wall obstructing your progress, you can suck up bombs, I think you know what I'm saying. This is the worst stage level design wise, because at least you can't soft lock yourself in the even less fun levels. You're making a great case for why this is a good game. It's mediocre, not bad. And what's the next level? Go fuck yourself. What more can I say about this level that hasn't already been droned on to death about? 
It's slow, enemies are easy to miss, there's not even any platforming to balance out the boring gameplay, recycling the same cross sections from the Doom, which is why I didn't talk about its level design aside from the fucking walls. Aside from the fucking slowly crawling turrets, that admittedly you can speed up, but if you do, you risk missing the enemies, and the removal of the pointless fans from the Doom, which adds nothing. Is this level as bad as everyone says it is? Yes. Worst stage in the game? No. It's thematic long, which isn't saying much because the major sections are copied like those fucking stupidly slow elevators. This stage is just flat out not fun. If you do just run through everything to the end. <laughs> Finally a good stage! So for my main point of criticism, this could have easily been the hero stage 5 because the good mission is just completing the neutral mission on a timer, so both flashback levels could be ran through neutral saving from non-flashback shadow suffers from. Now on to praise. The level's fucking fun! It's a lovely cinematic level showing off the space aesthetic and gravity switching with platforming only contributing to saving time. Still, it's a fun little not really punching mission on the hero route only resulting in time losses. The dark mission however, after destroying the first set of defences, you get to redirect an alternative gravity section. Progressing through the level in an entirely different way from the hero path while being a bit of a mindfuck at times, just like every gravity level in Sonic games. It makes raising to higher doors less like recovering time to part of the main path to orientating yourself towards it. Safe to say you fell in love with this level. When you're punished with three consecutive cancer levels, you tend to fall for anything with variety and a platforming focus. So here's the first stage that actually plays into plot point left after Sonic Heroes by actually involving Shadow Bots and Shadow's quest for knowledge. It naturally leads him to Eggman, while the Black Doom presumably gives up and goes off to actually lead his army or something. The missions include genocide, which to be fair to Eggman, why are gun invading while there's a fucking alien apocalypse? I hope the general got sacked at the end of this. Great level analysis. And Omega's mission is blowing up Eggman's blimp with rocket launchers and the few machine guns you receive throughout the level. This stage is the only one I would really say suffers from floating platform syndrome, where other stages you do have them, they tend to be in space or in magic ruins, but here it's just sheets of metal in the air. While at least the stage takes advantage of some of the verticality, sadly I can't really say this is one of the good stages. The obvious one is the harder spot enemy in the evil mission, and then the difficulty to aim at the blimp. I'll admit the muscle memory was the main reason why I was able to clear the mission first time. It was hell on my casual playthrough to unlock all the stages. The boss is on the platform with clusterfuck firing at you before he jumps down but he has so little health you can spam him to death with a type before he can even do his normal attack pattern. Ever wanted to assassinate the president? Well they survived so your dreams are squashed. Should I still call the police or not? Anyway, this stage is the most fun chase mission in the game, actually taking advantage of how quick combat is with weapons by making enemies obstacles to getting hits in as opposed to being obstacles to progression through the stage. As well as some platforming segments between the main damage phases and even some shortcuts you can damage boost through with electrified rails, while well, there isn't a true time limit because the plane will wait for you to reach certain landmarks before progressing, there's an awful sense of speed that isn't felt with the previous stage due to the enemy spam arenas filled with missile shooting tanky shadows. And then the hero mission is more genocide with every enemy on a linear path except one on each split in a room. I'm ashamed to say that despite seeing both aliens, I managed to skip one. 
Why does evil have the worst stages? Not to say that this is god awful, but it's just fucking boring. Flying through everything only to jump off the bird to collect weapons to spam at a flying green object. And that's the evil mission where you have to interact with the level design. Not to say that the stage is empty, but due to the control bullet hell is impossible, so the obstacles are barely obstacles by allowing you to damage boost through the entire stage and possibly jump onto a different bird if you take too much damage. It's the same gunship except it hovers over the platform you have to spring up to from a floor where the weapons fall to. Spoiler alert, there's only one finale stage I would say it's mediocre. What can I really say about this stage? Atmosphere is fitting, has a really fun gimmick with a sucky gun, substantially different alternating pathways depending on mission, though admittedly the evil mission just has you fly over bridges and dumps you in front of doors after faffing around battle arenas. The stage isn't particularly platform heavy, but the main obstacle enemies can't be sucked up and teleport making combat actually feel like combat even if it's extremely sonicky jump then dodge dog battling. Wait, you're skipping boss fights now? They're identical battles, I'm gonna group them at the end. So the final arc level. I fucking love this stage so much. The atmosphere of the place literally crumbling below your feet leading to a heavily platforming focused stage with a chaotic atmosphere as you race to the end against the clock which admittedly is such a lenient timer that it never causes issues, but it keeps waiting sections feeling more anxious than, say, THOSE FUCKING ELEVATORS! Calm down, me. They're gone now. They can't hurt you. <sighs> but yeah, rotating mid-air platforms, segmented drawing rails, functional rule running segments, very vertical level design giving you multiple ways to not fucking die and of course the computer room extending the length of this already extremely beautiful level. Once again a brilliant mix of platforming with fantastic atmosphere. Heavy emphasis on rail grinding and enemy placements that tend to actually obstruct forest progression. The hero mission is just a mad dash to the end where the main difference is the existence of an easier lower path. For the evil mission however, the lava forces you to up the more difficult paths which change the rail grinding for some home attacking and ring dashes. As well as the lava pumps guards firing frequently enough to be a nuisance if you don't skip the pumps. And here breaks the chain of no genocide missions, and so here's another final comet level, but with a darker theme and now a heavy emphasis on a hover disc. Now the level's fairly basic to run through, mostly just straight paths and ride poison pins if you fall inside your insta die. Fairly boring mission to be honest, especially with some areas recycled from the other comet level. Meanwhile the genocide mission actually has some substance. At least with one section where you're gonna manage your own damage on a hover disc while you're forced to slow down to take out flying enemies over your poison lake. Other than that, it's by far the worst finale stage. Definitely the kind you'd expect from a game of this reputation. A surprisingly melancholy stage for a path where you kill all of humanity. The soundtrack and the surprisingly minimal defence mostly consisting of doors and the odd singular robot in the hallway. Now there are set camera gimmick sections where you see from the view of the turret that's trying to shoot at you but other than that it's a fairly balanced straightforward stage. Either running through everything to reach the end or attacking the odd robot factory. This level definitely does rely upon its atmosphere to be enjoyable. But unlike Undertale Genocide, beating this path is required for the true ending, so you don't exactly get the feels for killing all of humanity. Especially since they attack you randomly in the hero path, and more importantly, there's no other characterisation aside from the general and the president. Despite the attempt at atmosphere failing on most players though, I do still enjoy the stage mostly for how calming it is. It's definitely the calm before the storm of 
So there's three final bosses depending on the path you end up taking. They can all be boiled down to neutral most for being Eggman, then the good and the bad boss fight. And I use that wording very specifically. So this is the best boss fight in the entire game, no question. First, his arena is the most creative. Being similar to a heavy dog where there's elevated platforms within the stage except the centre is left empty. There is the odd weapon crate dotted about in the corners but you'll pretty much only use them when you charge up your chaos power which is also true for the other bosses. So Black Doom uses meteor strikes, fire blades and light blade boomerang things as he teleports about the arena between leaving after images to layer these admittedly simple attacks on top of each other. And of course, the lack of weaponry, it's very hard to choose this boss fight and even when you try, if you chaos control at the wrong moment, you miss out on a huge amount of damage from the infinite ammo of the chaos form. Imagine if someone turned gambling into a boss fight, except the house is the one that's losing all of the money. That's Egg Dealer in a nutshell. So we'll basically run around the arena while he counts down the timer to his own action. Meanwhile, you can attack him to make your own. And well, you're a Sonic Recolor, so you're going to get in a lot more moves than he does. And if Eggman magically gets a move in, you can cancel it out with yours, or even steal it to make it blow himself up. So basically this is the boss fight equivalent of stop hitting yourself. Yeah, pretty much. JUST KIDDING! So imagine if a boss didn't want to attack you and instead stood there charging the screen nuke. That's this cunt. Admittedly, the first phase of the fight is somewhat interesting, using Sonic as a stepping stone to reach his head as he shoots lasers at you. And the phase itself is fairly short so it doesn't overstay its welcome. It's a shame it's only a quarter of his fucking health bar. The rest he will slowly slide across the arena until he's standing right in front of you, stare at you for a good 5 seconds, then bitch slap you before hiding behind his shield again. Then of course makes you run away or tank the damage, making you either lose out on rings or an opportunity to attack all your sanity as he slowly slides towards you again. Worst part is he's a tanky boss. Your chaos energy fully charges when he's around half health. And he can shield the bullets, denying you recharge. So you'd better know how to make him attack you, or else you're going to be stuck there for another good 10-15 fucking minutes on this goddamn boss fight. This and the super fight are the only times I'd say this game's bosses are flat out bad. This one just sticks out as the worst because they added the cock tease of a Sonic rival battle only to have a robot with a gear grindingly slow pace instead. It's the Hero Comet level with all the puzzles removed and added Roblox requiring genocide to pass, but thankfully there's mob spawners so that's nice. On a serious note though, this is the most meh final stage in a Sonic game, just in general. Just run in a linear hall and hold the shoot button for a while while picking up ammo, such a shame really noting the other finale levels quality in both aesthetics and for three, maybe four, at least the level design. This stage was definitely an afterthought since how many other Sonic games that have a true ending also have a level with the super fight? As far as I remember, only Adventure 2? Yet another reason why that game's fantastic, but getting back on topic. He's boring and tedious. The main reason for this isn't even the boss or the super controls themselves, it's just the learning curve throwing you right into the action. Like, the boss's main gimmick is his eyes fuck off behind him every time you attack it, which at first is annoying because you instinctually spam Chaos Spear to attack because there's no cooldown and the obstructions get destroyed instantly by it. But the only real way to deal damage to Doom is by charging it up, which the design doesn't really encourage. Then of course there's his rings which block his eyes, so instead of attacking them to get a shortcut when going back and forth, most will go all around timing out. 
Not that this is a good battle. This is no Rush Adventure finale. Seriously, to anyone who thinks Sonic games are shit, the 2000s hand games are the most consistently good Sonic has ever been. I'm sorry, what game are we reviewing again? Look, you know how slow I am at making content. It'll probably be like five fucking years until I'll be able to talk about it in depth. Also, we? Just get on with it. You've rambled about fucking 23 levels and like 10 bosses. Right. Fine then, the boss is annoying as is due to his secondary gimmick, Chaos Control. How does it even activate? By getting close. How does Shadow aim his spears? That's right, proximity. And of course, Doom pulls shit out of thin air to circle him, meaning landing those charged spears is annoying. God damn it. I'm finally done. Is that really how you're going to leave off the review? <sighs> no. I just gotta catch my breath. Take your time. So, uh, does anyone mind if I continually look down the screen because this shit is a little massive? So, is Shadow a good game? No. There's far too many problems from conflicting elements like an emphasis on combat with weapons which turns it into a joke, a messed up tone where Shadow sounds like he's in his emo face and Sonic's friends just joined the KKK, but is it a bad game? I'd argue no. While the game undeniably has absolutely terrible levels and bosses, those are the minority. And even with the issues I just mentioned, there's still a great use of platforming, gunplay, hybrid gameplay in the chase missions which take full advantage of your movement speed and insane damage output. There's levels that use the mission structure to give an incentive to play multiple paths, and even with the tone, the neutral and the good paths, with one candy taking exception, are for the most part fitting. From wanting answers from Eggman to protecting the Ark from Doom and Eggman, and of course taking the fight to Doom for attacking Maria's planet. So no Caddy, I don't think this game deserves to be on the same list as a piss coloured rat who moves forwards for two seconds when you tap the unlock stick up. It's not as broken as Sonic 06 and it's not as boring as Sonic 3D Blast. And those are just main series examples of worst games in this series alone. But back to this review. The main problem with this game is that it has no audience and there's some rushed elements that stick out like a sore thumb, which can be seen on a casual playthrough from how broken the boss refights are. This game did come out one year before 06 after all. This was a huge case of Sonic Team being over ambitious in the era where they would start from the drawing board for every single game built upon a gimmick which itself would be built upon multiple other gimmicks combined. This is a third person shooting speedrun platformer with multiple path storytelling. Just saying that is a fucking mouthful. And that's the point. While the games of this era were undeniably labours of love by the old team, nobody who likes furry cartoon animals wants to play a shooter. And no shooter wants to play as a furry. But of course some shooters do want to shoot furries. Anyway, a Sonic themed shooter is less of an easy pill to swallow as a character switch platformer or a platformer with interconnected stories between unique characters or a fucking space adventure and with three short years of games continuing with edgy concepts it's really no wonder why modern series is so scared of these 
that Sega wouldn't let the Comic Sonic cry. Yeah, not even the comic spin-off is allowed to delve into these more character-based ideals due to fear of getting called edgy. And that's honestly the worst thing about this game. Not the game itself, but the series around it and the effect it had on it. It overblown the edgy aspects of this admittedly extremely edgy series and highlighted those aspects in the following games. Serious Sonic and Shadow in 06, a fucking furry werewolf, furry with fire on his chest, furry with a fucking sword. It didn't matter that these games had substance to their edgier tones, this game was so blatant with it, it pretty much ruined it for the rest of them. And nowadays people are just getting sick of the cheesy shit. There's a reason why Rush and Heroes are better received story-wise than even Colours today. Because they actually put effort into writing? Shut up. Because there was a balance. Contrary to popular belief, the series didn't die with 3D. It was the mid-2000s that really done the series in. Outsiders mostly just say 3D because that transition lines up with Sega failing in the console market. How aside from the Black Eye Brigade going fucking autistic. Advance was a fairly well received callback to the classics. And people legitimately thought Adventure successfully converted Sonic into the 3D formula, and its sequel built upon that framework. Some of you, it's mediocre. It has its highs, it has its lows, but it just evens out in the end. Though its highs don't reach anywhere near its predecessors, and the lows, they're comparable to Big the Cat. The game has a lot of ironic enjoyment, however. So you don't even like it? No, no. Ironic enjoyment is still enjoyment. It's just... Memes, for example. People enjoy memes ironically, yet they wouldn't play, say, Fortnite out of ironic enjoyment. They would just hate the game. Ironic enjoyment is pretty much just guilty pleasures that you love to laugh at. Well done, you just explained what a phrase meant. But yeah, I would recommend playing Shadow from the stage select screen. Of course that will require you to do a few playthroughs, to minimise how many times you have to do it. Do the pure paths, to Run through Restopolis twice, do the good and bad missions, then continue on neutral. You'll have all the levels unlocked and one of each final boss unlocked. You really don't have to bother with the final story, but you, if you enjoyed what you played, then you'll have an idea of what missions are fun and which aren't, so you can avoid those dreaded flashback levels. That's actually a good point. Damn you, Sonic, for making the military obsolete! <coughs> Why do I have to use the words that make me sound small? Fucking Diablo, mate. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 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 There's 
the next shoes to buy the tail sweat <laughs> Oh god Oh, I definitely don't want to lose that. I'll cut the recording for a little bit. Look, you know how slow I am at making content. It'll probably be like five fucking years until I get around to talking about the actual games. Now where was I?